Chapter 5 is on trigonometric functions. So in 5.1, we talk about the graphs of sine, cos, and tan. In grade 11, you actually already went into sine and cos graphs. In fact, some of you might have even seen the tangent graphs. If you haven't, it's not a big deal. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through all three in a lot of depth. And then not only that, but we'll probably do, obviously, some sort of an advanced functions connection to the grade 11 material. Okay, so that means probably a lot of radians. That's okay, let's just get started. Here's the warm up, and in number one, they're asking us to just recall what the sine graph and the cosine graph look like. So, what I've done is I've graphed them over a domain of 0 to 720 degrees. Now, remember that each of them has five major points that help you to start off the graph, and because it's periodic, it's just going to repeat itself. So, sine starts right at 0, 0 then goes to 90 degrees and 1, then 80 degrees, sorry, 180 degrees and 0, 270 degrees and negative 1, and then 360 degrees and 0. The cosine graph starts a little bit higher at 0 degrees and 1, 90 degrees and 0, 180 degrees and negative 1, 270 degrees and 0, and then 360 degrees and 1. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a reminder. And basically this question from the warm-up is asking you to take a look at the tan graph. So remember that this is the quotient identity, sine over cos is equal to tan. And when we put in any of these types of angles as our x values, or I guess in this case our theta values, we get y values of 1. So those would be major points on the tan graph, but don't worry about it for now. We're going to look at the tan graph a little bit later. Okay, so just recall some information about the periodic functions. A periodic function is any function that repeats itself. So what I've done here is I've just highlighted, you know, a starting point. You can choose any starting point. And I decided to choose one of the peaks. And then I decided to highlight until I got to that peak again. Okay, so if I start to talk about certain things about the periodic function, I'll probably need that graph again. So I've just drawn that highlighted part and let's talk about some properties. One cycle is, like I said, from one starting point to where it's going to start to repeat itself again. The period of that cycle is the horizontal length. So what you can always do is take the x value over here, which is x2, and subtract the x value over here, which is x1, and you'll get the period. Now the amplitude. The amplitude is half the length between the max and the min. So if you have your max and you have your min, you're just going to subtract them and then divide by 2. So that'll give you, instead of this entire dotted line, the amplitude is this solid line. So just from either the max to the middle or from the min to the middle. Okay. Now it's always going to be positive. That's just a little bit of a tip. Okay, so sine and cosine functions in radians, that's the advanced function's little spin where everything we did before was in degrees, and now we're going to use radian measure instead. We're still going to look at period, amplitude, max and mins, intercepts, and here's a little bit of a new thing, the even and odd function. So recall that an even function is considered to be a function where the original is equal to the horizontal flip of that uh, function. So if it works out that the horizontal flip is equal to a vertical flip of that original function, it's then an odd function. Okay, so let's take a look at sine and cos. Here's a sine graph, and notice that instead of the degrees, I put all radians here instead. So it still starts at 0, 0, but instead of 90 degrees, I'm going to replace it with that pi over 2, which is equivalent to a 90 degrees, but in radians then you know that 180 degrees is pi, 2 pi is 360 degrees, and you know, you, you just add, like, if you have something like this, you're just going to add, I think it was pi, in order to get to the next one. Okay, so notice that an entire period is from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So that's the period right there. The amplitude is 1, because you take your max, which is 1, subtract your min, which is negative 1. That's going to give you a positive 2 on the top. Divide it by 2 and you get 1. So the max and min do not change. Overall, your graph doesn't change. We're just changing um, the x-axis to be in radians instead. 
something that's important is your x-intercepts. So that is at 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, so basically n pi's, where n is any integer. Okay, and your y-intercept is at 0, 0. So this guy is going to be an odd, and um, I don't know if you can kind of visualize this, but if I took this and I actually flipped it upside down, so this is the vertical flip, if I continued that over this way, it would overlap over a vertical, sorry, a horizontal flip. So if I took this and I flipped it this way, it actually overlaps and becomes the same function. So because the horizontal and vertical flips are basically the same, this is an odd function. Okay, so the cosine graph. Again, we graph the entire thing and instead of using degrees, we change everything to radians. Notice that the period is still 2 pi, which is the equivalent of 360 degrees. Our amplitude is the same as the sine function, which is 1. The max and min were always 1 and negative 1. And any of the x-intercepts seem to land on these pi over 2s. And notice that any of the numbers in front of the pi over 2s are always odd. So we go n pi over 2 is where our x-intercepts are, where n is every odd integer. And then our y-intercept is at 0, 1, and this is an even function because if we decided to flip it horizontally, it's going to go like this, and it's just going to continue where your cosine graph is. So since the f at x is the same as the horizontal flip, you're going to get the same, or sorry, you're going to get an even function. Okay, so this should kind of align with the cast rule. Let me explain. You know the cast is C-A-S-T. Now if I have the sine graph, notice that sine is positive as in above the x-axis. It's positive from 0 to 180 degrees or pi. Well, doesn't that make sense that sine is positive in this quadrant and in this quadrant all the way to 180 degrees or pi? Then sine is going to be negative from pi to 2 pi. So from 180 degrees to 360 degrees. And, huh, that seems to make sense. Sine is supposed to be negative in these quadrants. Let's see if that actually works with the cos graph as well. So cos is positive from 0 to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. So cos is, yep, positive from 0 to pi over 2 and from 3 pi to 2 pi. So right there as well. It's negative right in between here. So pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, which is this region right here. And notice that only sine and only tan are supposed to be positive in these two quadrants, which means cos is negative. Huh, okay. So starting to make connections here. All right, now the tan function. So since we know that tan is equal to sine over cos, we can start to figure out the function a little bit. For instance, any time the numerator is equal to 0, you're going to have your entire function equal to 0, because 0 divided by a number is just 0. Also, any time your denominator is equal to 0, you're going to have a problem, because that's going to be where a vertical asymptote happens. So basically, any time that sine theta is equal to 0, which is every pi basically, you're going to have a 0 x-intercept, okay? But when your denominator is equal to 0, as in any time cos is equal to 0, in other words, n pi over 2, where n is odd, you're going to have an asymptote. So it's going to look something like this. Any time sine was 0, so remember the sine graph started right here, and that's where it was 0. Then it went up, and then it went down, back at 0, went up and went down. So any of those points are where your tan graph, that's the red, is going to be touching the x-axis. Now any time cos was 0, so remember cos started up here, then it went and touched right there, and then went down, and it went back up again. So any time it touches right here and here, the 0, that's where your tan graph is going to have those asymptotes. So here are some more properties about um, the sine, cos, and tan graphs. Basically, the sine and cos graphs are very similar. You have an amplitude of 1 and a period of 2 pi. But the tan graph has no amplitude because it goes on forever. There's no max min. 
Um, it's also undefined at certain areas wherever there was the vertical asymptotes. The period of tan is actually a little bit shorter. It's about half the size and it's going to be at pi. Okay, now the last things I want to talk about really quickly are any of the transformations. They're basically the same as any other transformations you've seen. So if I have an A in the front, that is my amplitude. So whatever that number is, that's your amplitude. It also represents your vertical expansion or compression. Okay, now your K. This K represents um, part of I guess how you figure out your period, um, it's your horizontal stretches and compressions. Okay, now there was that formula that you learned in grade 11. The period is equal to 360 degrees, notice we've changed it to radians, divided by K. So whatever that K value is can be calculated um, by having your period. All right. If you have a negative for your A value, you're going to have a reflection over the x-axis. And then if you have a positive at the back or a negative, it's going to be your up and down factor. And then if you have your positive or negative within uh, the brackets, then that's going to be your left and right. Or in other words, we call that your phase shift. Okay, so notice that things haven't really changed. There is a lot more that we're kind of dealing with in terms of the radians. Um, but you know what? What's best is showing you some examples. So I'm going to do that in a separate video. So check it out.